Hey guys, Brendan with Sonic Electronics. I'm Alan. And today we got some Q&As for you. No, it's been a while. I hope you missed us. The question we have. You look so handsome with your beard, Brendan. Oh, you should have seen it a couple weeks ago. When you guys are watching the video on this car, make sure you watch it. You'll see a bigger beard. And then I shaved. So you don't know when I shaved. You don't know when I had a beard. I don't know what happens. I don't know when I had a beard. So I don't know. So did you join the Dollar Shave Club? No, I don't. I can't afford that. <laughs> it's a dollar. Anyway, You can't afford that? <laughs> no. I can't afford it. It's a dollar. Okay. A dollar a month. So the question we have... One here, razor. They're not sponsoring us. Okay, I'm just, so the guy... You know. <laughs> the question we have today, guys, is uh, from Bryant off of Facebook. And his question is, where is the best place to mount a tweeter? Currently, I have tweeters in the dash firing towards the windshield, and I want better stage slash imaging. Well, a little trick that was passed on from Alan to me. And then the godfather from, of audio gave Alan that trick. From generation to generation. generation. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say there's one specific ideal location because every car is always different. Yep. However, in your particular uh, question, um, from my experience, them firing up no, at the windshield it's not is the not usually the best uh, location. <laughs> uh, obviously, with some processing, you could probably make it better. Or dumb um, it down a little bit because now it's amplified from reflecting off the windshield. You're horn loading your tweeters <laughs> off the <laughs> off the windshield. Yeah. Well, some guys may like that. You know, maybe some bullet tweeters up there. <laughs> Anyways, although in that Dodge truck it worked okay. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the Chevy with the hybrid audio. No. Or? The Dodge. Which Dodge? Which Dodge? Nate's Dodge. Oh yeah, yeah, that actually yeah. sounded pretty good, but we had an Audison Bit 1 on there so we could dumb things down and time align it. Yeah, we really could make the magic happen. So what you guys can do, and what you can do, Bryant, is basically remove the tweeters from the factory location. Extend you, extend you some wires. Extend some of the wires off the tweeters. Take some double sticky tape, put it on the back of the tweeter. <laughs> not, okay. Not on the front. Not on the not, front, because that's going to block some sound not there. Not on the diaphragm. <laughs> and then stick it in different locations, like on the A pillar on the top of the door or on the door itself or closer to the mid-range. See where it sounds best in that car because every car is different. I can't just tell you, hey, you got a 09 Honda Civic. The best location is on the middle of the dashboard at two o'clock. I don't know. We really got to try it out, play some music. And it's even and really a good idea to even play with angles as well yeah. too. So Not just flush mount them. Maybe get a little 90 kick or a 45 degree kick on the tweeters to image them a little bit better towards the driver and the passenger, trying to create that perfect X pattern in the center of the car or the center of the dash so you get really good staging or imaging. Uh, but what would really help too is not only finding the best location, um, but to have a processor that will allow you to time align the system. You know, a lot of the times where you're in the driver's seat and you have a tweeter here and a tweeter here on the passenger side, the this driver- tweeter is gonna hit your ear. Way faster than the one on the passenger side. So you're gonna have to dumb the one down on the driver's side, right? Or, yeah, am, I, or am I backwards? Yeah, you'll delay the one on the, on on the, the driver's side. Because you want the passenger to reach here. You want it to hit your ears at the same time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you can go ahead and add more on top of that because in this car we did some custom tweeter pods, Alan and I actually, and I totally, I was well, gonna pass it off Well, let's just show him, you this because this is a common location that in my opinion works a lot better if you look at any of the car audio fabricators out there, any of the higher end, SQ cars are in magazines. This is a common location um, where they're building tweeter pods um, and, and angled properly. Uh, see, if you angle them properly, you can create better staging with even out, without having a processor yeah. alone. Um, even but, new radios uh, have pro like a built-in processor with yeah. time alignment anyways. But, uh, you know, obviously a processor basically is magic and it can fix tons of different things and make everything sound eight million times better. But let's give you an idea of what these are, because we just happened to build these pods. Aren't you gonna come, Brendan? Oh, sure. Come on, Brendan. Tell them about your tweeter pods here, because here's <laughs> one on the right, but you have one on the left, so you have two to talk about. Yeah, but they're both mirror images of each other. Well, okay. not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, the factory location on this car is in the dash, just like yours, Bryant. And the customer obviously really wanted to see the logo of the tweeter, but wanted the best sound quality with still looking factory. Uh, so in this case, what Alan and I did before we really fabbed the pods is we double stuck the tweeter to this panel, 
to see if we can get some good imaging if it sounded good. Obviously we're closer to the mid-range than being in the dash so we're going to get less separation in the sound and overall get you better sound quality. So we found out this angle actually worked really well to create that perfect image right in the center of the dash. Uh, obviously with our processor and tuning things a little bit and, and tweaking stuff, we really got them to sound great. Um, and the staging in this car, believe it or not, is actually pretty phenomenal. But the cool thing about this with making that and putting the tweeters in a better location at a better angle, with hardly any manipulating, we were able to really create better staging where when you listen to it, the vocals sound like they're coming from the center of the dash. So, without a center channel. Without a center channel. And obviously, depending on the angle or where they're located, you might have to you know, manipulate it a lot to even get it okay. So we were fortunate enough to spend some more time before we started fabbing to really uh, help the end result with you know, very minimally just you know, tweaking the 363 to where we were able to have a really good stage uh, presence in the front. Exactly. So this will be a common area, like Alan said, that you'll see a tweeter uh, closer to the mid-range the best as possible. Now, if you're doing like a three-way active set, let's say you don't have room for your, uh, your wide, wide range driver in the door, I've seen a lot of guys doing like a three or a four on the A pillar with your tweeter right next to it. And that obviously will be much better than a, a two-way, in my opinion, depending on what you're doing, if you're running active or passive. But uh, this is a great location for most guys and most cars. You can do this. You will have a delete panel right here that hides the actual hardware for the mirror to be attached. And this panel just pops right off and you can totally fab it and, and paint it to match the grain of the door and, and make it look really good. So, And you always got to keep in mind too, a car is not necessarily the best environment. So when you're, when you're trying to figure out a spot, as the sound wave is developing, there's always weird things that sound reflects on, like on the driver's side. Steering wheel. There's a steering wheel in the way, um, whereas this side is clear and wide open. So there's always obstacles that you have to try to overcome to have the best results in the end. So every car is completely different. Exactly. You know, obviously you want your stuff to be uh, symmetrical and looking identical from side to side, but in some cases it may not be the best. You may want your tweeter up an inch higher on the left and an inch lower on the right. You never know, but it doesn't look that great. And, and in most cases, it's really not far off from each other where for the most part, the angle might be slightly different, but um, you know, most people never notice. Yeah. yeah. But uh, other than that, guys, uh, if you do have a tweeter on the dash and you want to retain them there, you can also make some custom pods off the panel that basically pops off the dash. We've done that on a lot of the 2009-2012 uh, Hondas. Makes it easy, especially that car. There's really not a panel here that we can build off of. Um, or you could do it in the A-pillar as well. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of just drilling mm -hmm. a hole in someone's door panel and flushing a tweeter. That's pretty nasty. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously you have kick panel options where you can put the speaker, uh, the mid-bass driver, and the kick panel with the tweeter right there really close and angle those properly. Um, and that will really work out well. And um, man, I mean, it, it's, it's endless on what you can do. I mean, I, I would probably say every installer, or every fabricator that's got experience with doing it's probably got their own tricks yeah. that just tend to work for them, you know? Yeah. Well, other than that, Brian, I hope we helped you out there with your uh, question. If you guys have more, please post them down in the comments below. And uh, this is Brian with Sonic. I'm Alan, see you later.